Imagine living in a world where at any second, the lights could just flicker and die. It's not just a scary thought anymore. It's a looming reality for all of us here in the United States. Now, Americans, fellow survivalists, we've had to wake up to the fact that our power grid is hanging by a thread. Just look around from the catastrophic blackout in Texas that led to the loss of 250 lives to the indiscriminate rolling blackouts in California. The signs are crystal clear. Turn one's way to power grid. Envied across the globe is now teetering on the brink of collapse. And yet here we are being pushed towards electric cars and an ever increasing array of electric gadgets. Especially at a time when our electricity supply is more vulnerable than ever. Heavily reliant on the unpredictable nature of wind and solar energy, it's almost as if the policies designed to protect our planet are ironically pushing our most essential services to the edge of disaster. But it's not just about renewable energy sources. Uh, the shift towards regional transmission organizations has fundamentally transformed the way our power is traded, favoring the cheapest, uh, often renewable sources at the expense of the more reliable fossil fuels and nuclear energy. This has led to a grid that's less robust, less reliable, and more susceptible to failure. And we've all seen what happens when the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine. The grid simply can't cope because uh, there's a way to prepare for the worst. How can we as prudent survivalists brace ourselves and our families for the day the grid fails us? It's time to explore seven critical preps you absolutely must consider before it's too late. One, turn your home into an impenetrable fortress with a secret safe room. Imagine this, the power grid has failed, the world outside is in chaos, and you hear the unsettling sound of footsteps creeping closer. What do you do? You don't panic because you were prepared. You've transformed a part of your home into an unassuming fortress, a secret safe room. Um, this isn't a mere high doorway. It's your family's sanctuary in times of dire need. Be it from natural disasters, on steroids, or threats from those who are less prepared. Why is this essential, you ask? Picture the scene post-grid collapse. Uh, societal norms are out the window and your once secure neighborhood could now be a free for all. Your secret safe room is the ace up your sleeve, offering a fortified haven complete with everything from life-saving water and food supplies that won't spoil to a first aid arsenal and a hand crank radio to keep you connected with the world outside your fortress bubble. Now, building this secret safe room isn't an offhand weekend project. It's a mission. You need stealth on your side. It should be the room no one would suspect accessible only to your inner circle. Think beyond locks. Imagine walls and doors that stand steadfast against brute force security bars that say not to intruders and a breath of fresh air with a secure ventilation system. Location is everything. While basements have their charm with natural cover, an internal room with no windows could be your golden ticket. It's about more than just bricks and mortar. It's about the tranquility of having a secure corner in an unpredictable world. Inside, You'll want provisions to outlast the siege, water, non-perishable treasures, a medical kit, and don't forget the throne essentials. Remember, the peace of mind knowing your loved ones have a fortress amidst the chaos priceless. Consulting with home security maestros or deep diving into online vaults of knowledge on home fortification can set you on your path. While the notion of a safe room might seem ripped from a spy thriller under the glare of normality in the twilight of a grid fallen world, it's your survival linchpin. Two. Uh, next up on our list, we're talking tools, uh, but not just any tools. We're diving deep into the essential mastery of manual tools and analog devices, a survival secret too many of us overlook. Now, you might be wondering why focus on the old school in our high tech world? Here's the deal. Uh, imagine a day without electricity, no power for your gadgets, devices, or digital comforts. That's where the real challenge begins. Bringing the spotlight to the heroes of our story manual tools and analog devices become the MVPs and scenarios where reliance on electricity is a distant dream. Consider so the myriad of tasks we take for granted, drilling, sawing, grinding, not to mention the simple act of measuring distances. Picture the surrounded by silence, no buzz of electricity, no hum of power tools, just the serene backdrop of a world unplugged. The Fiskar X7 hatchet uh, isn't just a tool. It's your lifeline for chopping wood for fires to keep you warm or for building shelter. The Stanley 12 951 spokeshaws becomes your go-to for precision woodworking, carving out necessities or creative comforts from the wilderness around you. And when it comes to sawing, forget electric buzz. The Garrett Wade traditional brass back handsaw is your silent partner in cutting through challenges. Literally 
but it's not just about building and repairing. It's about staying connected to the world and keeping track of time. And the echo of the grid's silence, analog communication devices like the Kaito Ki-500 five-way powered emergency radio become your window to the outside world, offering vital news and updates without a flicker of electricity. And for keeping time, the Seacoast and Kate 109 automatic watch insurers, each second doesn't slip by unnoticed, powered by nothing but the motion of your wrist. Why does this matter? These tools and devices aren't just alternatives. They're your independence from the grid. They ensure that even in the shadow of technology's absence, you can keep building, repairing, and staying informed. Three, unlocking the secrets of traditional navigation. Imagine a world where your smartphone turns into nothing more than a shiny paperweight and your car's GPS system greets you with silence. This isn't the plot of the next dystopian movie. It's a potential reality if the grid goes dark. On our tech-driven lives, the thought of navigating without digital aids seems almost as unthinkable as breathing underwater. Yeah, it's this very skill that could mean the difference between being hopelessly lost and confidently finding your way in a world without digital signposts. Why is mastering the art of traditional navigation with physical maps and ancient tools so crucial? Picture this, a complete grid collapse renders all modern conveniences instantly obsolete. The smartphone in your pocket, useless. The car's GPS, a uh, relic of the past in such times, a collection of uh, mystical maps, topographical wonders, detailed road atlases, and even those old maritime charts become your new best friends. They're your windows to the world, revealing the secrets of the landscape, hidden dangers, and life-saving resources like water and shelter. But we're not just talking about having these treasures in your possession. Oh no. The true adventure begins with the mastery of these tools. Do you know how to use a compass, read the stars, or decipher a sextant? These are not just skills. They're your tickets to survival. And now I'm going to share a story that might tickle your sense of adventure or perhaps your funny bone. A few years ago, on a family camping trip, we decided to throw our reliance on technology out the window and only use a map and compass for what was supposed to be a quick day hike. I'm sounds straightforward, right? Well, it turned out to be anything but. Uh, what was intended as a two hour jaunt turned into a day long saga of wrong turns, minor panics, and an impromptu tour through what I solemnly swear was the kingdom of poison ivy. This uh, adventure was only a mile from our campsite, yet it felt like we had discovered a new frontier. It was a laughable yet pivotal moment that hammered home a critical lesson. Leaning exclusively on technology for navigation is akin to walking a tightrope without a safety net. Unreliable in the best of times and downright dangerous in the worst. Zero up by exploring airtor stores, maritime supply shops, or the myriad of online retailers that specialize in survival gadgets. But remember, owning these tools isn't the end game. Becoming proficient in their use is what will set you apart. Invest time in orienteering courses or celestial navigation classes, practice reading maps, and using your compass on regular hikes. Turn these skills from novelties into second nature and you'll transform uncertainty into confidence. In an unpredictable world where the safety and security of traveling from point A to B hang in the balance, being adept at reading the land and sky is not just a useful skill. It's an essential one. Four. Next up on our essential countdown for survival is something you might not have given much thought to, but trust me, it's an absolute game changer, the mastery of fire starting. Imagine this, the grid has collapsed, night is falling, and the cold starts biting at your bones. What's your first move? Uh, if your answer isn't start a fire, then we need to talk. Fire is the bedrock of survival. It's not just about basking in the warmth or cooking up a storm. It's about signaling for help in desperate times, boiling water to ward off illness, and yes, keeping those spooky shadows at bay. I mean, here's the kicker. Starting a fire is one thing. When you've got all the conveniences of modern life at your disposal, it's an entirely different beast when you're facing down Mother Nature with nothing but your wits and whatever you've managed to pack. We've been there caught out by storm in 2017 with uh, nothing but wet matches and hope. And believe me, it was no picnic. Our saving grace was a fellow camper with a magnesium fire starter who turned a potential disaster into a victory against the element. That night was a wake up call. In survival, your gear is only as good as your preparation. Your fire kit needs to be robust, versatile and foolproof. We're talking waterproof matches that laugh in the face of rain, magnesium fire starters that don't quit, sturdy flint strikers that ignite with purpose, and windproof lighters that burn with conviction. Each piece offers a puzzle to solving the fire dilemma. 
providing you with multiple path to success in even the most daunting conditions. Uh, but yeah, uh, cheer alone won't cut it. You need the skills to back it up. This isn't just about striking a match. It's about understanding the heart of fire making practice in every condition imaginable wind, rain or shine to ensure you're not just prepared, you're ready to conquer. And when it comes to stocking up, there's no shortage of quality brands like Yuko, Gerber and Zippo offering top notch gear designed with survival in mind. In essence, fire starting isn't just an item on your survival checklist. It's a lifeline that ties directly to your well-being in a world without the grid. It provides warmth, cooks food, purges water of unseen threats, and signals to the world that you're not going down without a fight. This is why ensuring you have a comprehensive, foolproof fire starting kit and the skills to use it is non-negotiable in your survival prep. Don't wait for the grid to go dark to realize the true power of fire. Prep now, stay fiery, and turn the unthinkable into the manageable. Five. Uh, next, we're diving into something you won't believe you've been overlooking. Imagine the power grid fails, uh, pharmacies shut down, hospitals are overwhelmed. What's your plan for medical emergencies? Um, you need an arsenal, not of medicines from a bygone era of convenience, but from nature itself. That's right. We're talking about unlocking the secret pharmacy in your own backyard. Why is this game changer number five on our list? Because when the conventional healthcare system is out of reach, knowing how to whip up a natural remedy becomes your superpower. Picture the simple willow tree in your backyard could be your go-to for pain relief, thanks to its aspirin-like properties. And think about the calmness lavender can bring to your stress-filled days or how Ichinesa could be your shield in flu season. Uh, but it doesn't stop at knowing these natural wonders. It's about turning your home into a living, breathing first aid kit. From drying herbs to brewing potent tinctures, we'll show you how to turn your green friends into powerful allies. Imagine having a garden that's not just for show, but a vital player in your survival strategy. By the end of this video, you'll see your garden in a whole new light. And uh, because we're all about concrete steps, we'll introduce you to resources that will turn you from a novice to a seasoned herbalist. Six. Now, Here's a prep that's a total game changer, yet it's one that slips under the radar way too often. We're talking about the superpower of growing your own emergency food garden right in your backyard. Think about it. When the grid goes dark and our day-to-day -day life gets turned upside down, hitting up the grocery store might not be an option. That's where your green oasis steps in. Imagine having an endless supply of fresh veggies, potatoes, beans, squash, you name it, packed with all the nutrients your family needs to stay strong. And it's not just about the veggies. Uh, we're also looking at herbs and perennials that bring both medicinal value and a burst of flavor to your crisis cuisine. What's incredible about tailoring a garden for emergencies is its flexibility. No uh, matter if you've got a sprawl backyard or just a cozy balcony, a garden can thrive and the cherry on top. The skills you'll hone, think composting, battling pests without calling in the cavalry and saving those precious seeds for the next harvest. Kicking off your garden does need some upfront effort seeds, soil, maybe some snazzy containers, but the payoff, massive. We're talking food security, a boost to your mental and physical wellness, and an unbeatable sense of peace, knowing you're ready for whatever comes next. If you're new to the gardening game, uh, no sweat. There's a treasure trove of advice out there from your local green thumbs to digital gurus, all ready to help you grow your survival sanctuary. But remember, the real secret sauce to a garden that's ready for the apocalypse, consistent love and care. Making it part of your daily life means when things go south, your garden's got your back, ensuring your family stays fed, happy, and healthy. Ola seven, cultivating community, alliances, a mastering barter systems. Imagine, if you will, a world where the grid is gone, completely dark. Scary, absolutely. But what if I told you that one of the most powerful tools to overcoming this darkness is something we often overlook today, our very own community. That's right building a robust network of community alliances and developing a keen sense of how to barter could very well be your lifeline in a post-grid world. Well, you ask, it's simple. Uh, once the grid collapses, the conventional means of buying and selling goods, even basic communication, could be a dead end. In such times, the concept of community isn't just a feel-good term, but a critical survival strategy. The power of having a network of trusted neighbors and community members with whom you can exchange goods, services, and invaluable information cannot be overstated. But here's the twist. Many find the idea of relying on others in such a manner almost unthinkable. In our day-to-day -day lives, we've grown so accustomed to our independence, we buy our essentials from strangers. 
and often know little more than the names of those who live next door. However, in a scenario where the lights go out for good, those community connections suddenly transform into our most precious resource. Here's a personal anecdote to drive the point home. Uh, remember the massive blackout a few years back, although that was just a glimpse of what a real grid down scenario could look like. It was a profound wake up call for many, uh, but it was during this time that neighbors came together like a close knit family, sharing resources, checking in on each other and offering support from an electrician neighbor, setting up generators to a green thumbed friend sharing their garden bounty it was a crystal clear showcase of how community strength and barter can significantly boost resilience in times of crisis. And don't be fooled. Creating such a network isn't as easy as flipping a switch. It demands genuine effort to build and nurture relationships, to lend a hand when needed, and importantly, to foster trust. This could mean getting involved with local community groups, showing up at neighborhood gatherings, or even spearheading local preparedness initiatives. What's more, Understanding your community's underlying skills, resources, and needs can pave the way for a thriving barter system. If you're a wizard with woodworking, why not offer to make furniture or tools in exchange for food supplies from someone with a bountiful garden? The essence lies in identifying what you can provide and what you may need in return, thus forging a reciprocal relationship that benefits everyone involved. For those itching to strengthen their community bonds, look no further than local social media platforms, community centers, or town hall meetings. These avenues are golden opportunities for making connections, gaining a deeper understanding of your community's broader needs and capabilities, and of course, identifying potential allies in readiness for a time when cooperation becomes our currency.